out there, my lovelies, and welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'm Shorty Vaughn, and today we're gonna cook this big old whole chicken. We're gonna do it in my Easy Bake oven, otherwise known as a toaster oven. Why? Because it is not a major appliance, and I want to save some money. And that's what we do here on the channel: is try to cook things as economically as possible. Saving money on groceries, saving money on electricity, water, you know, the whole shebang. Because life's not getting any cheaper. Anyhow, yeah, let's get down to it. Let's cook a whole chicken. Yeah, you're right. In this video, I am going to handle raw chicken. Um, my hands have been impe are impeccably clean. I have washed them three times. I'm going to be buttering my raw chicken, my whole chicken. Um, if you are opposed to that kind of video, um, maybe go enjoy another one. I have a very dear, sweet, wonderful friend who cannot eat um, anything on the bone or anything that resembles the animal from which it came. Um, she's not a vegetarian, but you know, she buys cuts of meat that are, you know, kind of unidentifiable, ground beef, chicken breast you know pork chops without a bone that kind of thing when it comes to thanksgiving i always go over and prepare her turkey for her because she loves it and she wants it for thanksgiving and she wants the whole bird but she cannot handle the carcass um i have the utmost respect for that chicken that gave its life so that we can enjoy it for our dinners this week and um i think that i treat it respectfully and yeah it's 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 gonna be delicious and yummy but if you're opposed to the footage of you know me handling raw chicken you know just go look at something else yeah absolutely there's like 170 some videos you can find something baby i know it okay so i have removed my bird from the packaging I also put my hand inside the cavity and got out all of the innards. And all that was really in there was a chicken neck, which is kind of unfortunate because, you know, Pig Pen likes some of the parts. But, you know, for 67 cents, you cannot complain. You've got to, yeah, suck it up. It'll be all right. This is a chicken. This is a whole chicken. There we go. These are the breasts. And you know because they're nice and plump and juicy. Plus, think about like if it had a head and feathers. You know, this is the breast part. These are the wings. These are the legs and the thighs. Then you've got the back and the last part that went over the fence. So, I like to cook mine breast side up. Some people will say, no, the breast has to go down so that it is juicy and not overcooked. We're just not going to overcook it so it doesn't have that problem. I also get out my seasonings on how I want to season my bird um, before I get my hands all in here. Because as far as I'm concerned, all of these items will need to be, you know, disinfected so we can prevent cross-contamination. Safety first. So what I like to do is I like to start with the breast. And I like to just put my fingers in under the skin just a little bit. Try to be careful not to tear it. And I just want to loosen that up as much as possible so that we can season, you know, over the skin and under the skin. I also have a little bit of butter here. And basically what I'm going to do is take a little bit. I know this looks gross, but this makes the best word. And I am just going to put that butter right there on the breast under the skin. And that really helps us ensure that um, our bird does not get overcooked, that our breasts do not dry out, and that they are super yummy and delicious. So got those all in there. And you can just kind of work it with the skin and just kind of smoosh it around until you've got the best cup maybe you want some more butter that's fine all right i'm going to take a little bit more butter and i am just going to go ahead and just kind of give it 
a little butter massage. Yes, Piggy, I know you are super excited about whole chicken. He's just, he's just dancing over here. Yeah, okay. I know this seems really gross. Gonna put some butter in the cavity too. This is about half a stick of butter. Um, if you um, don't care for butter, you could certainly use like an olive oil, canola oil, whatever you got. It'll be okay. There we go. And we'll go ahead and do the back side. There are a lot of pieces in here that will still have meat. And, you know, we're going to use it all week long. Because, okay, so where I live, there is a demand penalty on my electric bill for running major appliances and also for time of day. So anything that I cook between, yes, Piggy, I know. Quit poking me. Anything that I cook between 4 and 8 p.m. is considered a penalty. And so, like my electric bill, I actually have less than $70 worth of actual electric usage. Um, the other $300 are penalties and fees and taxes. My demand penalty this month is about $120 low. Um, and that's low. I'm saving about $100 off of the electric bill from this time last year by bulk cooking. So, you know, like last week I cooked the um, three, three ribeye steaks. Yeah, I cooked three pounds of ribeye steaks. We ate them all the week long in different preparations. And the week before that, we had roast. And um, the week before that, we had pulled pork. So, you know, by doing these bulk cookings, I have saved almost like $125 from this time last year. Um, really, what drives my cost up is the... Uh, air conditioning because 4 to 8 p.m. that's the hottest part of our day and that air conditioner is just cranking right along and thank goodness because I would be a melty mess okay got buttery hands I'm gonna go wash them okay all better clean hands triple washed gotta stay safe no cross contamination okay got a little bit of time here and I am just gonna go ahead and put that in the cavity, the wazoo, whatever you want to call it. Got a couple of sprigs of rosemary out of my garden. And I'm just going to lift that skin up. And I am going to put that rosemary stem right in there. And that will look lovely when we go to slice it. It will also flavor that and make that extra yummy and delicious. Yay, hooray. Go ahead and give it a good push. Try not to pierce the skin. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Got a little butter on my hands. Need a little napkin. Normally, I like to go to the store and try to find a rotisserie chicken, you know, maybe left over from the day before um, that I can reheat and serve all week long. But at 67 cents, yeah, there was no beat in it. Not at all. Okay, also I have some McCormick's Montreal uh, chicken seasoning. And this has got all kinds of garlic, onion, salt, spices, red pepper, orange peel, paprika, citric acid, green bell pepper, all the good things. And I am just going to go ahead and just very liberally Put this all over my chicken. And kind of grab it by a leg. Give it a little on the other side. I want to make sure that I get the front really good and covered. And we are just about out of this. Now I won't add any other seasonings to it. It won't need it because it's got everything in there and then some. Yay, hooray. Okay, so this is our chicken. Got a little thyme, you know, in the wazoo. 
got a lot of seasoning on it. it smells like raw chicken and a lot of seasoning perfectly okay with that i'm gonna put this into my toaster oven and um i've got it preheated to 400 degrees okay i've also made like a little beach blanket for my chicken so that my breasts do not brown too fast while they're in the toaster oven because um, my toaster oven is not extremely tall. This will cook closer to the element that will allow two things. One, for it to cook faster, which is awesome. Two, that those breasts might get a little bit dark. So I'm going to start it off with the beach blanket and then I can easily just, you know, move that off so that the rest of the breast can get really brown and crispy skin. That's the best. regular oven I probably would have loaded that larger baking dish up with all of my veg um, to cook at the same time and it would be super yummy and delicious that way but you know there's no room in there and there's nothing else that's gonna fit in this toaster oven I'm okay with that um, so for Andrew and I we will enjoy roasted chicken tonight for dinner we're gonna have mashed potatoes we're going to have gravy. We will probably have biscuits because that sounds really good. Um, and then, you know, some kind of a veg. I also made a little fruit salad, so we'll probably have that. It's only 108 today. So, you know, we're cool. We're, we're cool. We're cooled off today. I can handle it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's how we're going to enjoy it tonight. And then for us, we can get typically three, sometimes four meals out of that, including a chicken soup. So I'm gonna cook this till it's all brown, yummy, and delicious. Piggy is gonna sit over there um, at the entrance to the kitchen uh, so he can keep one eye on the back door and one eye on the chicken, double duty. It's a lot of responsibility for a little dog, but he's good at it. All right, bring you back and show you my roast chicken when it comes out. This is super easy, and it's 67 cents per pound. You can't beat that with a stick. Yeah, and we're going to make this into lots of meals. I have purchased a $5 whole chicken over at the Aldi, and that's a great price. But for me, like the Aldi is like 17 miles away, and that's a little far for me to go. Um, for, for a whole chicken. I don't usually pay $12, but I'm pretty lucky on finding those rotisseries day old. Okay, let's also talk about cleaning up after handling raw chicken. So I have a soap spray here, and I'm just gonna very liberally douse my work surface with it. Have a rag, a little dish towel with some hot water it's been the hottest water that i can get out of my spigot so about 125 degrees and i am just going to go ahead and run that all around i was pretty careful with the chicken don't think i got a whole lot of splatters go ahead and wipe off any of the backsplash here and the little grooves and then I will also take my rag and just kind of give the lip of my countertop just a little scrub underneath. I don't think there were any drips, but you cannot be too careful. I don't want my friends and loved ones and myself to get, you know, E. coli or salmonella or anything like that. Also have some of this seven generation disinfecting spray kills 99% of bacteria and viruses. And there we go. Give it a little, get a little zhuzh right there. That's fine. Perfectly all right. And I'm just going to go ahead and let that all air dry just according to the directions on my seventh generation disinfectant. 
Lysol probably works just as well. I like the way this one smells. Okay, so I have thoroughly wiped my countertops. I have cleaned my sink with hot water and soap, and I have used the seventh generation sanitizer on it. So my rag is done. I'm not gonna wipe another thing with it. I'm gonna go put it immediately into the washing machine to run on the next cycle. And then I'm gonna wash my hands really quick, get a new towel. Okay, so my chicken, my chicken has come out of the Easy Bake Oven. It took me about 45 minutes at 400 degrees. And I have tested it right here in the fattest part of the bird between the um, thigh and the leg. And it's exactly 167 degrees. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. It looks moist. It looks delicious. The juices are all running clear. I'm not mad at this at all. It smells like grandma's house. Yeah, my, my little niece, Cookie, her boyfriend, he thinks my house smells like grandma's house. I'm okay with that. I also have four biscuits here that I got out of the freezer um, because I buy biscuits. I don't make them because they're like hockey pucks. Nobody likes that. These are delicious and um, super affordable when I buy them over at the Smart and Final. Two for tonight, one for me, one for Andrew. And then I'm also cooking two for tomorrow night's dessert because we're going to cook once and eat a couple times. And this dessert, I'm going to share it with you. Super easy, super delicious. Yay, hooray. I am going to let this um, chicken rest. It's exhausted. It's had some time in the oven. It needs a little rest. It's okay. It'll be fine. Just going to go ahead and slide this piece of aluminum foil right over top. And that will allow all of the juices. That's hot. Hello. Will allow all of the juices to recollect and for the bird to rest and be extra yummy and delicious. I'm, you know, I'm not going to rush it. We've got some time before dinner. I'm going to let it just sit right here. That way, when I go to slice it, each piece should be moist and delicious and completely fabulous. For some people, slicing the bird is almost more challenging than cooking the bird. Now, if you roast it, if you buy a rotisserie chicken and you're concerned about how to slice it, you don't think you have the knife skills, you just pass on that. Darling, I don't care if you go in there with your bare hands and just rip it apart. However you have to get it done is just fine. You know, maybe it won't look the most beautiful. Maybe it won't look like Martha Stewart's. But, you know, I'm not Martha Stewart. And, and if she comes over for dinner with Gordon Ramsay and the chicken's a little bit butchered because you just did the best that you could, you're feeding your family. And they're welcome guests. And they won't say a word about it, I promise. If you need a good biscuit recipe, go over and watch Rhonda's Country Kitchen. I'll link it down below in the description. Maybe I'll put a card up here to somewhere. Um, anyhow, she is super fun and delightful. I love her and she just makes the most incredible um, country southern food. And her biscuit recipe really cannot be beat. Super simple, super easy. She's new to YouTube and she needs a little love. So go visit Rhonda's Country Kitchen and get your biscuits on. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm still working on it. I'm still I'm watching and practicing. One of these days I'll get it. I have faith. Okay, so I have offset my chicken onto my cutting board. And I have this pan. And it has, you know, a little bacon juice in it. A little, you know, bacon fat, a little butter, some seasonings. There might be a few pieces of skin in there. I don't know. I'm not worried about it. But I don't want to throw that away. What I want to do is save that for, some is going to be for my gravy. 
and some of it is also going to be for seasoning other things later in the week like roasted potatoes instead of drizzling olive oil on that i'm going to use some of my chicken juice to drizzle over my potatoes that's going to make them extra yummy and delicious it's also cost effective because you know this came with the chicken we already paid for this so we don't have to use anything else the pan is still a little bit hot so let's go ahead and got a mason jar here with my funnel got a little rag down in case I have a spill that will help contain it here's hoping we don't have any spills and so very carefully I'm just gonna go ahead and pour that off into my mason jar and then I will store this in the refrigerator at a safe temperature for future use and if I do nothing else with it besides add it to my chicken um, soup or my chicken stock well that's okay too all right there we go I use some of this for my chicken gravy and then the rest you know for the rest of the week put a lid on it stick it in the refrigerator and this is delicious I'm gonna start right here and right there at the joint I'm gonna go straight down and grab that thigh leg combination super delicious just give it a little pop and it'll come right off there we go yum oh yes I know baby everyone knows you're excited honey yeah now I didn't take the little wings apart because um, we're not actually going to eat the wings we're going to go ahead and take this right off the bone and this is going to be part of my chicken stock chicken soup whichever one I decide to do later on in the week no worries just right around like that straight down from the bone and you'll feel the breastbone that runs down the center of the chicken just cut right along that I cut all the way to the end and then basically you can peel it back and then just run your knife right along that breastbone and take off that yummy juicy delicious white meat that everybody loves just like that mine's still a little too hot it's all right it'll be fine okay there we go that's one huge breast and then we can do the other side just follow along that breastbone you can feel it right there all the way down all the way around the wishbone which is going to be right in here if you're lucky you don't cut it we like to we like to save them you know when the kids were little you got a wishbone for me Aunt Tanya we want to play wishbone yep I got one for you baby and then just go ahead and peel that right back slice it right down and you would do the exact same thing with your rotisserie chicken oh got a little piece of skin hanging on there we go and now if you look at your carcass you have still a ton of meat and I'm gonna pick all that off and I'm gonna put that into a Ziploc bag it's gonna be easier to pick when it cools that's just fine with me piggy is gonna get all of these little baby scraps for dinner and he's all right with that aren't you lover boy yeah all right we're also gonna pick the back because there is actually plenty of meat on there and that is gonna be delicious in our chicken soup and our other applications. So 
so this bird was pretty big what Andrew and I will probably do is go ahead and serve the we'll probably each share a breast and maybe he'll also have a chicken leg or thigh but that's pretty much how I take my chicken apart I'm gonna let this continue to cool um, for easier handling then I'm gonna pick off all the remainder of the chicken including the back don't forget the back you know the part that went over the fence last that's delicious too all right my lovelies well that's my roasted chicken Andrew's super excited about it Piggy's super excited about it Andrew does the house smell good yes the house smells wonderful yeah yeah, yeah. you're ready for some roast chicken yeah all right we gotta go because it's almost time for jeopardy and we're hungry be good be careful and look both ways we'll see you next time